Hey everyone, welcome back to Camp Keyframe. My name is Bas and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can animate this guy walking through the snow. So we're going to divide this in three parts. The first part will be the sled, the second part will be the character and the third part will be uh, bringing it all together with the environment and everything. So first off, we are here in our sled animation uh, composition. You can see what the sled is doing. Um, so we're going to animate this first and I'm going to do this in this new clean slate comp here. And we have our background layer. We have, uh, let's just zoom in here. We have these ropes holding the light bulb to the sled. We have the light bulb itself, this big guy. And then we have the ropes in the back, which are a little bit uh, less dark. We have the light bulb snow, which is on top of the light bulb. And we have this small cloth here in the back and this big cloth, which is a bit too big, but I'll explain that later. We have the sled itself. We have this small rope at the back. We have this small rope at the front. Let me zoom in here a bit more. And we have the snow on the sled. And then we have this snow floor. And that is, let me zoom out here. It is just this uh, this floor, the same color as the background, just so the, the sled is kind of uh, falling into the snow a little bit. So let's lock that back up. So first off, we're going to parent all the layers to the correct ones. Uh, let's see, I want this cloth and the snow sled to be parented to my sled and this small ropes as well. And let's, uh, let's do the ropes and light bulb to the sled for now as well. And the light bulb snow to the light bulb. So if now, if I change, if I move the sled, everything moves along with it. If I move the light bulb, the snow moves along with that. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the cloths for now. I'm gonna animate them later. And let's uh, turn these off as well. So first off, we're going to animate this sled part. Uh, let's single this one out and go to position and hit a keyframe. And then we're gonna go with command shift right arrow key. Let's jump 20 frames further. And let's uh, drag this to the right here. And then 30 frames further, one, two, three. Um, let's make it go back. So copy the first one and paste it over there. And then 10 frames further, uh, paste that again. So we have this nice little pause at the end. So now it's going to the right and then it's slowly going back and then it waits and then it goes again later on. So we're going to select all of them, right click and then go to easy ease. Let's zoom out a bit here. And let's go into this graph editor here. And let's see. Yeah, I think this is quite good. Maybe make this a bit less easing. This a little bit more. Like that. I think, yeah, we're gonna add the rotation now. So uh, while holding shift, press R on the keyboard so it also opens the rotation. And I'm gonna click that and just go a bit further here and then drag it up. Let's also watch it, the snow. Yeah, like it's going into the snow a little bit. And this one, we're going to give this some um, uh, right click easy ease as well. And we're gonna put this all the way over here so it kind of bounces it really, um, gets affected by the speed of the guy pulling on the rope. So it really, let's see, I think we need to put this one in here even. Yeah, and then maybe put this a bit earlier as well. Okay, and then go back to his normal state again. Turn off the easy and easy there. Let's see how this looks. I think it's gonna go even faster. Let's make this a bit later. It's like tweaking a little bit right now. Yeah, and then this earlier. So it's kind of going up and then slowly going back. To the going back. Yeah, I like that. So push. Yeah, it's like the rope is being pulled and then boom, it's going to the forward. It's going to the front and then sliding, e sliding back easily. Um, maybe even like that. Yeah, I think we can do it very little easing over there. So it needs to be really slowly go back. Okay, great. Then we're going to, let's see how this works. Yeah, this is nice. We're going to right click or uh, option click on this keyframe on the stopwatch and type in loop out, oops, loop out like that. Copy that and paste it on this one as well. And we're actually going to copy this uh, last uh, keyframe here and paste it over there. 
so we get this nice hole. Um, it takes uh, as long as this position. So now it will keep going into infinity. All right, nice. That's done. The sled is done for now. I think that's great. All right, cool. Then we're going to animate, uh, let's see, let's do the light bulb first. And I want this kind of this guy to kind of bounce a little bit when it's going to the front. Uh, so let's select a light bulb and put the anchor point at the correct position. Right over there. I want this to bounce right here. I want this to bounce up a little bit like that. And let's go here and then rotation. Let's zoom in here. And I want it to go up like that. Oh. And then give this some easy ease as well. And then that can go really fast as well. Like that's been a bit too much. Yeah, and then I want it to go down again. So copy this keyframe and paste it there. And uh, let's see how this works. Yeah, and now I want this to bounce from this point a little bit up again. So like it's bouncing the other way, but I can't do that because my anchor point is right there. So for that, I'm going to create a null uh, holding Option Command Shift Y. Let's create that null and it's called uh, Light Bulb Bounce. Give this a none color here. And I'm just going to scale this down. We don't need it this big and put it right there. I'm going to uh, parent this one to the sled and I'm going to parent the light bulb to my light bulb bounce. And this one, we're going to give a rotation as well in the other direction. So it's going to move a little bit up like that, not too much. And then copy that and paste it back here. Just give this some easy easing, nothing special there. Put this a bit earlier, I think. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, I think we can go a little bit earlier here. Yeah, so now we get the timing right. Oh, that's, yeah, that was better. Okay, cool. So that looks nice. Uh, but also, of course, let's copy this last keyframe of this one and paste it all the way over there and this one as well. So now we get this nice loop. Uh, if we add the loop out expression, uh, to this one as well. Oh, and I need to copy, let's copy this. Um, let's see, oh, no, let's copy this one over there, like that. Oh, and I need to copy this one here, of course, as well, to the front, and then this first one again to the back here, and this first one to the back here. So now it's a perfect loop. All right, that looks cool. Great. So that's uh, looking fine already. Uh, but now, as you can see, the biggest problem here is these ropes. They're not really um, moving along with the with the light bulb and with our sled. So what we can do is go into every rope. And because I, what I want to do is I want this point to stay connected to this sled here at the bottom. But when it moves up, I want this point to kind of stay connected to that part of the light bulb. It doesn't need to. Uh, stand correctly uh, uh, doesn't need to uh, perfectly stand still like this because the light bulb is moving so the rope should be kind of stretching out or something so um, we're going to fix that by going to our first frame here and these ropes i'm going to select all of them i, th I see that one is a bit too big though this one let's get our pen tool and drag it in a little bit uh, right yeah that's better so we're going to um, go to our window and our presets, plugins, stuff, and we're going to open Create Nulls from Paths. It's uh, standard within uh, Adobe After Effects uh, for the last two versions. So if you have, I think, Adobe After Effects CC 2018 and up, it's standard in there. And what this does is let's select all of these ropes here, ropes back, uh, no, ropes front first, and I'm going to open my ropes front number four here, go to content, group one, path one, select the path. And then if I click this button, the points follow nulls. Um, these two anchor points will follow, it will create two nulls for that. And they are controlled. Um, so if I so if I move this null, the rope uh, moves along with it. And this one as well, of course. So um, 
that's really cool. So that way I can parent these nulls to the light bulb and to the sled. So the ropes will con be connected to separate points instead of to one uh, object. So I'm going to do this effect for all of these layers. So select all of them, points follow nulls, and this one as well. Okay, so now we've done it for all of these ropes, uh, the ones in the back as well. So we have all these um, nulls here. I'm going to click on this uh, color button here and then select label group. So it selects all of these orange labels because I don't have any other of them. So they're all selected. Uh, let's put them at the bottom here and let's scale them all down a little bit. Doesn't affect our uh, ropes. So we don't need these big ones. And then we are going to select all of these at the bottom here. So I think that's all at the top. So every, so these ones, the top four, we're going to parent them to our light bulb. And one, two, three, four, those ones to our sled. And then do the same thing here. Those ones to our light bulb. And those ones to the, oops, and to the sled. So, and that's it. Uh, so now when we go back to our animation here, we can see that these uh, ropes are um, actually tied to our um, light bulb and to our sled. So the bottom is, uh, as you can see, to this one and the top one to the top part of the light bulb. So when it moves, it looks like the ropes are stretching out a little bit. So we don't have to do any animation for that. They're just following the animation of these elements, which um, makes it look really realistic and cool, kind of. So that's great. So that's done. And then now let's open up our cloths and our ropes again. And we're gonna add a little wave wrap effect to them. So let's start with our cloth big here. And um, okay, let's see, go to window, now to help, and then wave warp, distort wave warp. Okay, that's way too much. So let's set this height at two and the width at 80 because I wanted to have a little, a very long, um, windy effect, go to the left please, and the wave speed at 1 is fine. So now it, it's waving a little bit to the left, not too um, harsh. If you want it to go more harsh, you can turn up the speed of course, and then it's flickering a bit more. Maybe that's nice. Maybe let's put it at 2.1. That's cool. Or at not 1.5 then. Okay. And then copy that wave warp effect and paste it under as the cloth small as well. And that is nice and let's just maybe change the speed of this one to two then so it's not perfectly the same and it's it's a bit smaller so it can go a bit faster it's a bit less heavy uh, okay and then this big uh, cloth we're gonna make a new mask for that or a mat actually let's turn off the stroke here and I'm gonna create this now let's start here create this shape like that and call this cloth big mat put it on top of our uh, cloth big all right and then go to cloth big and go to your track mat and alpha mat and select your cloth big and then um, the mat and parent that to our sled so now it's only visible um, within that part and the snow is on top of it to make it a bit more look a bit more nice now to hide it a bit um, turn this off okay so that's done as well. And then we're also going to add some uh, wave warp uh, to our uh, little ropes here, but they can be a bit less heavy because they're really small. Uh, let's give them a height of one as well. And then uh, let's say 20 for this one and to the left, please. And then the speed can be maybe three here because they're really small and like jury maybe even okay I'm going this fine and copy that because I want to add something as well I'm going to add some wiggle rotation to this so we have the anchor point at the top here so it's like from that point and we're going to go to rotation option click on the rotation to a stopwatch and then type in wiggle and within that we're going to uh, go for a 1,3 so it wiggles a little bit and it's it's difficult to see because it's moving all uh, oh that's yeah Let's copy this one to our rope in small rope in the back. So we have this little uh, wiggle even going on. Uh, so let's make it makes it a bit more um, exciting and, and moving. 
Okay, great. I think that's it for the sled then. Did we do everything? Starting over here. Yeah, that's the whole sled animation. Um, you can vary with this, of course, if you want. Um, the intensity of the light bulb moving, the intensity of the sled moving, and the little um, animation of this these wave effects from these uh, ropes. I think if I maybe move it down a bit. Oh yeah, there you go. You move, need to move this wave warp effect for these little ropes down a bit more, but then they look a bit more realistic because it really wasn't really doing anything. Yeah, great, I'm liking this. So now we can move on to the animation of our character. So here we are in our character comp and we have the sled in here as well and the lamp and I'm going to turn those off for now because we, we don't need the sled, we already animated it and there's a lamp, we're going to do that later. And we are, let's unparent that, um, we have this head, we have his beard, we have his body with the zipper and, uh, and the pocket here. We have these two arms, the rope, and we, st we have these two legs. So first we're going to parent some things together. Let's parent the beard to our head. Uh, okay, the zipper and the pocket to our body, the arm left and arm right to our body. And we, the rope had oh, this little this little rope. We're gonna parent that to our head as well. And we have the mustache to the to the head. Yep, and the rope and the head flat to the head as well. Okay, so now we have this whole thing with everything attached to it. We have the body which has the everything attached to it. Yeah, and we don't want the legs attached because we're going to single out the legs first. And because this character is uh, designed in this way, the legs aren't really defined um, and clear. So because they're just these two big shapes uh, falling into the snow. So that's make that makes it a bit more easy for us, which is nice. Um, we're going to put our anchor point uh, up here a little bit. And this one, that's fine. And we're going to, let's go to our right and then position. Zoom in a bit here. Uh, let's go a bit further. Uh, position. And then um, let's say one, two, three, 30 frames later. We're going to place this one uh, to the right like that. And I want this to have a nice little curve here at the end, something like that. And then 30 frames later again, we're going to copy the first keyframe and make this the same shape. So we have this like uh, droplet shape to the side. And um, let's give this some easing. So yeah, so now it is stepping up a bit, stepping to the right like that, and then going back. I'm going to do the same thing with the leg left, the, the left leg here, position, uh, okay. Then like that, and make the, oops, zoom in a bit more here, if I can, no, I can't. Um, okay, then select your pen tool, you can do it like that. Okay, and then copy this one over there. And I'll do the same thing here. Yep, like that. All right, give this some easing as well. So now they're going to exact the exact same time. We don't want that. So let's offset this a little bit. So they're going one after the other. And let's give this a loop out expression, of course. Uh, loop out. And this one as well. Loop out. So we're done with the legs for now. Rah, great. Uh, first, we're going to add our pattern to our jacket here. We're going to do our artwork. And I have this jacket pattern, this PSD file. And I'm going to turn that around like that. And I'm going to put it above our body. I'm going to duplicate the body, put it, put it above that, and call that uh, pattern mat, mat, apparent that to our body, and the jacket as well to the body, the pattern. And I'm going to put the blending mode to overlay. Where is it? Overlay, overlay, here you go. Um, and then, uh, of course, go through our track mat and select alpha mat so it's only visible within that shape. Rotate it so it's n aligned with the zipper a little bit. Yeah, like that. Okay, great. So now we have our pattern in there. And first off, let's create these arms uh, with uh, the rubber hose plugin because I want them to uh, bend a little bit and this rope as well. So what we're going to do is open our rubber hose effect. 
or our plugin. There you go. And I'm not going to go to into too much detail how whole this whole plugin works, but the basic idea is you can create limbs with this. Uh, but for this, uh, kind of, but in this example, we're going to make a rope. Let's so we'll type in rope, and let's go for start end and create. There you go, and then you get this rubber hose, which reacts really cool. So we're going to place this one over there, and this one, zoom in here, over here. And if you select your uh, end or your, your, your end um, guideline guide thingy here, and you go into your length and turn that way down like that. And then we have our rope, um, rope pool. Let's copy the color of that and paste it on this rope here. There you go. And we can make this a whole lot thinner, of course. Like uh, five, big. how big, how thick was this? Two, I'm going to delete that as well. Um, let's make this two pixels, maybe three, a bit, a bit more, a bit more. Yeah. Okay, great. And then we have these two handles here, and you can see they start, they turn blue when they're at their maximum stretched out level, and then here they are nice and uh, rubber hosey. Um, so that's how we create that um, because we want this. If the character moves to sled forward, we want this rope to be kind of loose and then when he's when he pulls it forward it needs to be clean needs to be tight so that's why we're going to use rubber hose for this um i think this one looks uh, good already yep and then we're going to parent this one to our arm later but our arm we're going to use rubber hose for that as well so uh, for this one we're going to go to arm left and then i want this to be a shoulder and wrist composition and then the style uh, we have these different styles you can create. So let's first build it. Uh, let's go, this one. So we get this new rubber hose uh, layer here again. And if I select it and I'll go, go to style here and I click, uh, let's say, um, whatever. No, let's pick something cool. I like Popeye or no, a fingernail. And I click this button here. It will apply that style to it. So now we have this, uh, this, n this finger with a nail on it. Uh, but I want to go for tapered hose. All right, like that. And let's select one of these arms and copy the color here. And let's see, let's put it on there on the fill. Okay. And then we're going to position this shoulder here to our shoulder, of course. So let's see somewhere around there. And this one to this part here. And this looks really great. Uh, we're going to turn up the turn the length down a bit. Uh, maybe make it a bit longer. And a bend radius. You can uh, bend it how much, how, however you like. Let's leave it at that. And the bend direction. We're going to need to bend it the other way here, that side. Okay. Yeah. And then we're going to select our arm left itself and go to our stroke width. Let's turn it down a little bit, just to match the end point of our uh, arm here. So something. Let's make it a different or so for now so we can see it a bit better and then uh, that should be uh, do our wrist uh, that should be good like that okay and then this one the taper should be bigger because we have this fatter arm here let's just um, solo this out and our left arm left as well so we can see it a lot better okay so our shoulder here let's place it over there and the bend direction, the bend radius should be a bit, no, it should be, that was great. Hose length, maybe a bit shorter like that. And then select the arm again. And let's just play around with these parameters so they look good. Um, to make it to kind of recreate the arm that we uh, created in the first place in Illustrator. Well, I'm happy with that. It looks, it looks almost the same. So that's great. Let's copy our color back in here and um, unsolo these and delete our arm left uh, because now we have this arm here which is awesome uh, it works and we're going to put this at the same where the arm was so that's below no that's above the body uh, let's see where the body is above the zipper above the pattern yeah like that okay i'm going to turn off these two for now because it gets in the way and let's put it yeah that's nice and then i'm going to duplicate them so select all three of them and then we can we have this um where is it manage here 
and we can copy this whole thing and we can select this button here duplicate selected host group it duplicates it and it, let's put it uh, up there okay so we're going to move this to the shoulder here and this wrist to our wrist let's single those three out as well and go to our arm right red there we go um let's turn our arm left or this thingy that's close rubber hose for now we're done with that and uh, let's turn the opacity down it's also something oh we cannot do that because it's um there are expressions on there so let's just copy the color and right there so we can see it a bit better you know okay and then paste put that over there put this one over there all right so that's fine right now like that okay and then we can uh, delete the arm right okay awesome so now we have those three done i'm gonna put the uh this arm uh, below the body because it needs to be below that okay nice and then i'm going to uh, parent our shoulders to our body um no actually everything to our body the wrist as well because when the body moves I want everything to move along with it. So now all of these this stuff moves. I'm going to parent the head plus the head also to our body because this body is moved is moving everything. All right, and we're going to go to this rope here and these and this start point. This is this one. I'm going to parent that to our wrist of our left arm here. So that should be this one. So the start should be parented to the wrist here because when this wrist moves, I want this rope to be pulled along with it uh, like that. And then the other side of this rope, this end, we're going to parent that to our sled like that. Okay. Nice. Uh, cool. Because as you can see here, when the sled is moving, let's open this one up. Oh, it's locked. All right. Uh, we can see that this a sled is moving and then this point is following that position and then we're going to match up this arm when he's dragging it into his uh, into him so then when we have this nice uh, realistic animation all right turn it down turn it off again now and turn it off okay uh, so first we're going to use joysticks and sliders as well as a plugin um, because now everything is is created and working but now we're going to move the whole body and uh, you can do that manually of course but i like to use joysticks and sliders for that because it's a really easy tool not that not that difficult to use so we're going to open oops, we're going to open that up go to joysticks and sliders and um we're going to, and I've made a tutorial about this a week ago where I fully dive into how to create a joystick for your character. So watch that if you want to know how this plugin works. So I'm going to run through it quickly here. Uh, we're going to use it on our, uh, let's see, our body and our uh, rope, now our head and head like that as well. And then we want our jacket um, and the zipper pocket. So those ones I'm going to use for my um, uh, joysticks tool. So go to position and get a keyframe on the first frame. This will be our normal state here. And then what you need to do with joystick and sliders is go to the next frame. And then you're going to add your new extreme pose. And this, this one is for the one uh, he's looking to the right. I'm going to add a rotation to this body as well here. And as I said, if you want to know how this works, because I'm not explaining it correctly right now, watch the previous tutorial on how this tool works. But if you know how this works, you know what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit and put it to the right. And I'm gonna go for this jacket. I want this to turn a bit to the right as well, like his body is turning a little bit. And I want his the zipper and the pocket can go to the right as well a bit. And his head and his head uh, I, have the, I have the anchor point here, let's rotate it a little bit and turn it down as well. You can go into much more detail here, you know, give this head a little 3D space as well. But I just parented everything together with one shape because I wanted to do, do the quick and easy way right now. But you can go a lot further with that, of course, if you want. So this is the when he's looking to the right a bit down. So on the next frame, we need to have him to look to the left and then on the next frame up and in the next frame down. And then we have our joystick for this character finished. So I'm going to do that right now. So here you can see we have our joystick finished here. And if I move this around this 
guy follows along with it and because of because this rope is parented to this arm here to this wrist uh, that moves along with it whoops sorry that moves along with it as well so we get this really cool um, animation of this dude and as I said you can go into much more detail um, by adding a little ro rotation in his head kind of to make it look like he's looking the other way a bit 3d effect but this is just a basic animation right now so uh, we're going to um, keyframe this with the position let's position this 30 frames whoa it's a lot zoomed in um, I wanted to go one two three 30 frames later and then put it like over there and then we're going to give this some um, effect like this. And then one, two, three. I'm going to put this back here. So we have this kind of movement going. And I'm going to give this some easing. Go into this. And I think this is all right it's, it's it's quite all right actually but we want what i want is that it kind of stops in between here so it's stopping and then it goes back but i want this to have a, have a continuous movement so if i select these and if i i need to put these up here so select both of them if i do this then this happens and it's uh, it's not perfect so select both of them right click keyframe velocity and turn this on continuous and then i can just drag this up and then we have this nice animation that which is like not not doesn't have a little pause in it yeah okay so he's moving down a bit when he's walking i like this let's turn this on the first frame here oh, where are the legs i'm going to uh, time that up we have this legs animation here so let's maybe put it there let's see how this looks oh of course put a uh, and a loop out on it as, as well loop out so it keeps going and going. Okay, this looks uh, pretty good. <laughs> nice. So now we're going to add some effects to this. Uh, and that is a wave warp effect to this these little ropes here. So we're going to type in a wave warp again. And that's way too much. So we're going to go with like mm. one, 1 and 20, which should be enough to the left. That's fine. And put the speed maybe at three. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Wave warp, copy that and go to our other little rope here. We have a rope head uh, back, I think. Where is it? A lot of layers, rope head back right there. Paste it in there, which also has a little more. You can't see it, but it's not details that count. We have our beard wave here. And we're going to put these uh, also paste the um, effect on there. But I'm going to, uh, because now it's like a really uh, wavy little beard, but I, th but I want this to have a little big waving movement, just like the big cloth from the sled. So let's put this on three, the height, a bit bigger, and put the wave width like way up, like maybe at like um, 200 even. Yeah, like that. Like it's really, like it's one big shape that it's moving in. When we have it, now it's like a little bubbly uh, also a cool effect but i want it to be a really big heavy thick thick beard so put it at 200 but the the thing is what when you do this the um, this part here is also waving and i won't i don't want it because it's stuck to his face so it should not be waving over there so duplicate this beard wave and let's just call this beard uh, face and we're going to delete the wave warp effect and we're going to go uh, select our pen tool to create uh, a mask but this is a shape layer so uh, if i try to create uh, a mask here it just creates a new shape i don't want that so then you need to check on this little box uh, which says tool creates mask so then i can draw this mask around here so we only see this part of that beard uh, of that um, face beard as you know as i am going to call it right now so then it uh, doesn't um, Oh, and I need to do the same thing with our beard wave um, select this again click this button and then maybe like this we only see this part and we don't see that part and if this works out already yeah and I'm going to put the beard wave uh, this one can go here I think this would look good and it's kind of masked up with this flap so now it um, it looks better all right nice so that's great and we see this little thingy here so let's just tweak it a little bit so it's nice 
I can actually hide it behind the mustache here if I put it over there. Then we only need, don't need to have uh, this part visible. So now it looks, uh, it looks good. This is a nice, uh, nice wavy beard. Uh, bear in mind that all of these effects stack together like rubber hose and joysticks and sliders and of course this wave effect, wave warp, is getting pretty heavy. So just keep in mind that if your computer isn't that fast, this could uh, take a while to uh, render. Even on my very fast iMac, it's, um, it's, it's a lot of math to do. So that's uh, going to be a bit heavy. So this is, this is looking really good. Um, what I'm going to do now is animate this arm as well because it's not moving. And uh, let's go to this thing here. Let's go to our position and let's see, position this and then maybe have it go with a bit out and back again. And then there's some easy easing, there's some basic effects, basic, basic easing there. Yeah, and then give this some loop out as well. Okay. So it's kind of stretching his arm out as he's looking, as he's uh, moving forward. Uh, so now we're going to animate this lamp. Here we go. Here we are, these lamps. And what I have, let's just single them out, solo them. I have different elements. We have this, these little ropes, like thingies uh, around, uh, around the glass. We have the light bulb itself, this one. Oh. We have the lamp here, which is this part, and we have the lamp frame, the outside part here. And what I want to do is I want to create a little quick fake 3D-ish effect. So we're going to parent everything together first. So the lamp frame and the light bulb and the frame as well to the lamp. So we have this is our main thing. I put the anchor point up here because this, that will be our rotation point because I want it to rotate a little bit. And I'm going to parent this thing to our wrist, which we just uh, animated of this arm. We have this wrist right there, this thing. It's layer number 24, so I'm going back to my lamp here and then parent this to layer number 24. So now this moves along with that uh, arm and I'm going to go to layer 24 and open it up so I can match this movement. And I'm going to go here to my lamp and get the rotation up. So when it's back here, it can rotate a bit to this side. And then when it's to the front, I want it to rotate to that side. And then here we can copy this again, uh, right click and go to easy ease. And now we have this nice little, and I think it's a little bit too um, high up. It needs to be there, of course. Okay, so now we have this. Oh, and it needs to, uh, of course, get a loop out as well. Loop out. And then I think we need to offset this a little bit. So it's kind of swinging when he's Stopping with his arm, it's swinging a bit later. Yeah, that's looking instantly better like that. Let's single this one out again. Okay. Nice. So that looks good. Uh, and now we're going to um, create this fake 3D effect. And for that, I'm going to go to this lamp frame. And I want to position it here uh, when it's to the left here. Uh, I want this part is need to be a, a bit to the back, so I wanted to make a 3D effect like this. So uh, copy this, put it over there, and on this frame I want this to go to this side. So we have a little, little fake rotation effect. Uh, if everything comes together it looks a lot better. So um, position this one as well to this side, copy that there, and then place this one to the right here a bit. Like that. Nice. Okay. Yep. And then, of course, never forget this. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Now it keeps looping into infinity and even beyond, some might say. Okay. And we're going to mask this thing in this lamp here. So we're going to use a set mat effect for that. So type in set mat effect. There you go. And then select this, which uh, this is lamp, I guess. So let's go for a lamp. So it's only visible within this lamp shape. And I'm going to put the opacity down at maybe even like 40 or something, because we're, um, it shouldn't be that visible. Maybe it's behind or something. I think it looks better like this. And we're going to add a really uh, nice uh, lighting animation to this light bulb here. 
Uh, we're going to select it and I'm going to go to my help. Um, I'll, never, I'll never go to effects and search for anything. I'll just type in the help because I know how the tool um, is called. It's called radial blur. It's, oh, there it is, uh, CC radial blur. And what this does is let's go to, uh, and I have the wrong one. Uh, I meant CC um, radial fast blur. Yeah, and then we go to uh, our zoom, let's call it, put it on brightest. And if I put the amount up, you can see we have this directional light going. Uh, it's really uh, like a spotlight. I wanted to make it really big. If I put our center point, if I move that, then we can uh, create some nice lighting effect. And if I, how closer I move it, the bigger the, the light gets. So I like it like this, I think. And I'll... Um, uh, the thing is that it, this, this center does not animate, uh, which is, um, it's not sticking to this lamp. But in this case, that is good because we will, because the lamp is moving, we get this nice little change of lighting when this uh, lamp is moving. So you can animate this, um, um, this center point as well if you want, if you want to make it a bit more clear, but I, I kind of like how this uh, looks right now. So uh, that's a really cool, easy effect to create this more directional light beam. So we are done with that. So if I put everything together here, I'm going to turn off this body control. Um, and what I uh, mostly do, if you have more joysticks and slider layers here, just create a, a text layer and call this um, body control. And let's make this smaller. Oh, that's, that's way too small. Hey. Um, and uh, ah, that's that is fine. Okay, and I'm going to uh, parent this to our body control origin. This is blue layer, and I'm going to right click and go to guide layer. So now, um, when it's well, when something is a guide layer, it does not show up when you're rendering it, um, which is cool. Uh, so, but now I, I know exactly if I have three or four joysticks here, I know exactly what this one is doing. It's our body control. So, and I see that our light is being cut off by this snow floor here. So we're going to put the lamp above it over there, um, like that. And then we start the animation right there. So now this uh, character is uh, moving through the, through the snow slowly because he's an old man and the sled uh, is um, um, coming along with him. And now you, need, you just need to time this arm. Oh, we, did, we didn't even animate the arm. Uh, we have this wrist here and need to go to position and then let's go to our sled and go to that one and we have uh, just match this up position like that okay and then we can uh, let's see right click just I think a normal easy ease would be enough now I think we'll need to do it like this actually, so it's like it's really fast, putting this fast in into his body. And then we need to copy this keyframe and it needs to go uh, back here, I guess. A bit slower. Yeah, nice. And now we also put some loop out effect on it, uh, expression on it. It's not an effect, it's an expression, of course. And then we'll just copy this the first keyframe over here. So we have the same length loop as this sled. So now when it's back here, it starts again from this point with the loop out expression. So this is looking very good. And I need to, of course, I'm moving it quickly now, but you need to time this right and make it, make it look like it's not like, like it's actually pulling the rope forward. Uh, so maybe this one can even go a bit earlier then or a bit later, I don't know, just uh, play around with it, just to um, get the timing uh, right. And the, the, the easing is uh, important here as well. Maybe it should, uh, it should go a bit slower or a bit faster. Just play around with that. And then you get this nice uh, animation. So in the next part, we're going to put all of this together into one big composition. So here we are in our final composition where I put everything together. And you can see that we have, I've added all these background layers, these trees and these mountains and the snow and everything. And uh, I've re recently made a tutorial like a couple weeks ago about how to create this 3D parallax effect. Uh, so go watch that if you want to know how to, how to create this background. So I'm not going to go into that right now. Uh, and what I did here is I've added the character in here um, as a 3D layer right in between here. 
and uh, I also gave him some position going from the right to the left. So he is moving forward, of course. He's making progress in this scene, in the landscape. Um, but he is moving, but he's standing still in this composition here. He's just uh, being in one place and it slides back. So um, that's why I give this a position. So he does uh, move along with everything, but he is still, um, you know, um, sitting in the middle of the screen and I gave him uh, a mask here because when I go into this composition we had the snow floor here and uh, background and I put them as a guide layer so they, they're not visible uh, in here uh, so I just uh, because when I had this snow layer it would be on f in front of all of this stuff here so I just added a mask here just to um, our, our two masks actually uh, one mask is subtracted so it um, it, it uh, deletes everything uh, up under here, so his feet and the, the, the little part of the sled here. And then we have this other mask here, which is just this, which is nice and feathered out. If you, go, if you press F on the keyboard, you can see the feathering of this mask, because uh, this, this light was kind of harsh and uh, ending here. As you can see, there is the, the shape, and I just cut it off, because it was, uh, if you go into this layer here, it goes uh, right to the edges, and then it got cut off really hard, so I just gave it a really subtle feathering effect with a the mask there. So uh, I added that part. Then we had this trail here. This is just a shape layer with, uh, I'll just single this out, really this um, long sh uh, shape layer with this uh, darker snow color. I put it below the character and gave this the position uh, as the same as the character as well. And then we have this front part here, uh, just to give it a bit more uh, variation. And like there's a little lumps of snow in here to cover this, to cover this uh, stuff up. Uh, right there. So that's uh, what I added as well. And then you can see I have added three more things. I've added this snow layer here, which is just, which is just a looping uh, MOV uh, file uh, with a black background and some white snow falling in front. And I put that at the add mode on your uh, modes. Um, um, so it uh, the, the black gets deleted. And then I have added an adjustment layer here with a noise effect on it, just to give it a bit more of a filmy grainy film look here is nice and flat and if i turn it on it's a bit grainy looks a bit more uh, a bit more cinematic uh, just a just a normal noise effect put the amount on three and then the noise type uh, color noise i always turn that off and then i have a uh, grading i just added um, an extra layer and I, I added the lumetri color like the same thing you have in adobe premiere uh, i added it there and then if you go to basic correction and I've had um, added a LUT layer, bad times at the Arial. It's the one um, uh, a LUT pack from Hollywood cinema movies I bought uh, a while back, and uh, I put it on there. And there's a little bit of color correction to, just to make it a bit more cinematic, and then you get this um, this full animation of the guy walking through the snow with the light uh, beam. And you can of course add lot, lots of things to it. Like what it doesn't have right now is uh, a bit of a, a bit of light on his body, on, on the character itself or on the, tr on the tree right here or anything, whatever you want. But it's just like, uh, yeah, it's, it, it was about the animation of the sled and the character. And I think that worked out pretty well. So I hope you guys liked this video and thanks for watching. Please give it a thumbs up or even consider subscribing to the channel if you aren't already. And thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next Camp P Frame. Thank you, bye bye.